How's it going guys, it's Seca Ferris and welcome to my Warlock Chaos PvP guide for the patch 5.3. In this guide we'll be covering talents, glyphs, gemming, reforging, enchanting, and as well as a basic rotation guide for arenas, rated battlegrounds, and random battlegrounds. Well, if you're watching this video it's because you chose the destruction slash chaos spec of Warlocks. This is arguably the best spec in 5.3 for arenas. Uh, some may argue that Affliction and Demonology can put out more damage and CC, but personal opinion, this does the most damage and has the most utility. Uh, obviously, most people have the common conception of Affliction being the only Warlock spec that's playable or any viable comps pretty much for uh, arenas. But personally, I think that Destruction is both the simplest, the funnest, and the most effective in killing targets. Um, for example, just check out the charity tournaments nowadays, most warlocks for the 5.3 patch run destruction, and it seems to be the most effective. For the talent portion of this guide, you're going to be running a specific set of talents. A few of these can be switched out for separate other talents, but for the majority, you want to stick with this specific guide. Uh, for the 15 talent, you're going to be running Dark Regeneration. It gives too much healing overall in such a short cooldown that it's pretty much better than both Soul Leech and Harvest Life um, for destruction alone. For the 30 spec, you have a choice here. You can run either Mortal Coil or Shadow Fury. If you're running BGs or RBGs, I recommend running Shadow Fury just because of the AoE stun effects. But if you're running 3s or 2s or 5s, pretty much any arenas, you're going to be wanting to run Mortal Coil just because one of the insta cast. Uh, healing factor and then in addition to fear. Uh, it's good for getting peels off uh, either on yourself or a healer or a teammate and overall it has pretty good utility. Owl of Fear mostly relies basically on affliction and I don't use it as much. I definitely would stick between Mortal Coil and Shadow Fury. The 45 talent you're going to be running to run Sacrificial Pact. I know a lot of people think that Dark Bargain is the best way to go for this thing uh, but I think Sacrificial Pact is probably better when you take a look at it. Uh, basic out of both the Sacrificial Pact has a 1 minute cooldown and Dark Bargain has a 3 minute cooldown. It's the most obvious difference. Dark Bargain shields you for 100% of damage but then you take 50% of that over the next 8 seconds which has pretty much a dot reliable to touch with Karma. Sacrificial Pact absorbs a base 25% of the demon's health and then turns it into a 400% sacrifice shield for 20 seconds. If you're running Glyph of Sacrifice, which I'll cover later, the shield takes damage out of you but increases the shield by 400%. So basically, you're taking 25% of your health away and shielding you for 100% uh, of your health for 20 seconds. So as you can see, I have 438k unbuffed and then I'm running a shield that is 438k health. It's extremely effective at um, this like countering openers pretty much against rogues and warrior kiting anything that's going to hit you really hard pretty much any damage you're for the most part immune for 20 seconds unless it gets mass dispelled off but uh, most priests are probably going to do that on you they're going to save it for some more important cooldown possibly on a healer or bubble or whatever uh, after that you didn't want to run blood fear or blood horror uh, i personally like this the best especially going up against cleave comps because you can just pop up once not really have to worry about anything and then you get a uh, another CC off on a, a DPS like a warrior or death knight or a paladin anything that's gonna be smack you in the face it's gonna have to run away for like four seconds or so uh, also it does last for a minute which is good and it only has a 30 second cooldown so you can be popping this pretty frequently when it comes down to things uh, the only thing I would change this out for would be unbound will it could be useful unbound wills pretty much another trinket when it comes down to things except it costs 20% of your maximum health and has a 1 minute cooldown. Uh, this could be effective in getting out of blocks or getting out of deep freezes because when it comes down to things, uh, a mage that has you deep is going to do more than 20% of your maximum health as damage so you can avoid most of that. Uh, if you use it in combination with sacrificial packs I think you can pretty much get a good effect out of it but when it comes down to running melee cleave teams which is pretty much our downfall as warlocks you're going to want to run blood horde. Uh, 75 talent, the most controversial of the three talents. Uh, you're going to be wanting to run Grimoire of Sacrifice. Not only does this increase your damage, it also heals you for 2% of your maximum HP every 5 seconds. However, Minuscule can actually help out 
and the damage increase is just too strong compared to the other abilities. Uh, your destruction warlock is pretty much just going to rely on his abilities and his spells and not much of a demon DPS as demonology or affliction would like to be. So you're going to be pretty much similar to a mage, fire mage perhaps in essence and uh, mainly your spells are going to be your primary source of DPS besides just your one dot which is immolate. Um, Grimoire of Supremacy I use sometimes when some is summoning uh, Shiva out, uh, Shavira, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I use that against possibly ranged DPS teams and like uh, spellcasters. Uh, it's useful for getting extra CC off, but if you're not lazy, you can pretty much fear the whole team and keep your keep your fears up without having that much of a problem. And uh, sacrifice just runs too much damage increase. Uh, level 90, you're gonna be wanting to run Kill Jane's Cunning. This is pretty much the uh, the most beneficial to a Destruction Warlock. Being able to cast while moving is extremely, extremely wonderful. Uh, Chaos Bolts have a long cast time nowadays. And um, it's really beneficial to be able to kite and move while you're casting and everything like that. I think overall it's very important and very crucial to the um, overall utility of a Warlock. Unfortunately, in patch 5.4, they are going to be nerfing this ability, so I would recommend using it while you can, however many few weeks you still have left. Uh, besides that, Archmode's Fury and uh, Magmaron's Fury and Archmode's Vengeance pretty much don't have that much ability or uh, have that much utility uh, to be able to use. Here's an example here you can run and cast Chaos Bolt. And yeah, it's pretty effective. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for talents. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave All right, now on to glyphs. You're going to be wanting to run these three specific glyphs. As a destruction more like we pretty much don't have that many specific talent-based glyphs, um, except for the glyph of conflagrate, which is the most important. You do, you definitely, definitely, definitely need to run this glyph. There's no other glyph in the game that you need to run more than this one right here. Um, so basically, the previous conflag effect is when you put immolate on a target as you see here you can conflag which does a high amount of damage but in turn it takes off the immolate ability which is a dot but now with this glyph you can pretty much keep on your immolate as you conflagrate and you'll have two conflags and it's overall just extremely powerful when it comes down to things and it's it's a necessary uh, after that I run glyph of demonic circle and just being able to teleport sooner than later is always better. Uh, I think it's extremely effective when kiting or anything in general. And it'll definitely ease your healer when it comes down to things. Uh, besides that, around Glyph of Hellstone, you receive 100% more healing from your Hellstone, but over 10 seconds. Uh, if you combine that with uh, Dark Regeneration, you're just going to be running an extreme, pretty much a second life worth of health. And uh, it'll help you out and relieve some pressure and everything like that. All right, gemming. Uh, this is not really any particular setup or anything. Your main abilities, your main stat priorities as a destruction warlock are mastery, critical strike, and haste. Um, so as gems for the main slot, the meta, I have 116 intel and 3% crit and strike. For the reds, I have 160 intel. For the yellows, I have two, either 230 mastery, uh, or there's another mastery gem that goes for Mastery and haste. I'm pretty sure uh, you can run that too. I just like running mastery and uh, straight up It's really powerful as a destruction warlock Besides that I like running hit just to keep your spell hit up. I reforge pretty much 100% out of hit So I don't have to worry about that and then for the most part you just want to stack intel and mastery Overall that'll give you the best effect you can gem haste, but I found out that reforging haste is actually more efficient and I'll cover that in the next section. All right, now covering reforging. Uh, first of all, I would highly recommend getting the Reforge Light add-on. It's this UI right here. It's very simple, very low memory, and it helps completely in reforging when it comes down to things. The three pretty much stat priorities for reforging are Haste, Crit, and Mastery. Uh, all of those will do effective damage on the target. Uh, you can set it up here for which one you want stat priorities. And then you can hit calculate, it'll calculate it for you, and hit show. And there you go. When you hit reforge, it'll tell you how much gold it costs, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, all this will be in the description, by the way, so you can check it out. Alright, for the last part, I'm going to be covering a basic rotation. It's 
pretty much a three spell rotation as destruction, but uh, just for the new people to the class, I'll be helping you guys out. First of all, you're going to want to remember to summon your demon. If you're fa facing a, a spellcaster cleave, you're going to want to summon the fell hunter for the sacrifice ability, which is a silence. If you're facing a melee cleave, you're going to be wanting to run Voidwalker for the ability which grants you 30% of your HP for 20 seconds. It's overall effective and can easily help you survive a burst. You're going to want to make sure you buff yourself, obviously. Basics here. Uh, get your soul well out. I'm pretty much just going over the beginning of what you would do for an arena. Uh, make sure you have your soul well for your teammates. And then when you find a target you want to open on, you're going to want to start with an immolate. And then you can do two good flags. Pretty much good flag is going to be one of you wanting to use uh, every time it's off cooldown. Uh, you can save those though if you have a chaos bolt. I'll show you a tip in a second. And uh, if you see right here down below your target frame, all your your uh, main damage comes off of these burning embers. And burning embers allows you to cast a chaos bolt or use a fire and brimstone ability which you won't really use that much in arena. Overall though, uh, generating embers can be best done by using the main ability to incinerate. Uh, certain times they'll proc around maybe 60 to 100k. Uh, it's pretty good when it comes down to damage and can be used effectively. Uh, you want to keep your immolate up and use uh, the fell flame ability just to keep basic uh, damage. However, be careful that fell flame does pretty much burn your um, your mana down really fast. Uh, also, if you have an excess amount of embers, you can always ember tap them away for 140-ish k XP. It's 25%, but if you're stacking mastery, it'll be more effective. Uh, a little opener here I like, if you're in a pop your cooldowns, I like to get your uh, one incinerate, get your immolate, cast a chaos bolt, and then cast two conflags. So this will do a lot of damage right here, so that's right there is like 500,000 damage. And uh, within, what, one second of going down, just from the basic cast time of a chaos bolt alone, you can line it up with the conflag and hit extremely high on the targets and I, obviously this is on a dummy so these aren't highly realistic uh, if you're going against a full tyrannical gear or full pvp geared target you're pretty much going to be hitting around maybe 140k 160k chaos bolts uh, it's going to crit every single time so that damage is pretty consistent when it comes down to things uh, i usually do hit around 40 to 50k incinerates though and 40 to 70 to maybe even 100k conflags if I get lucky and I get a crit. Uh, overall though, your damage is reliant on incinerate conflag, immolate, shadow burn too though is important, you want to remember. Uh, it's an execute ability that only destruction warlocks have. It's extremely important that you always keep one ember for that uh, when you get the chance to kill, like uh, line up a kill for your kill target. And uh, if they're below, what is it, 20% HP, you can crit them and, and it'll pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time kill them. I've had I have played a few matches though where I did get them down to like 1k HP which is pretty upsetting but uh, besides that it's generally gonna kill them. Uh, also though here's another thing I have a macro setup where it casts havoc at my focus so you want to set your second target focus. For me it was usually my healers. I have a focus fear macro. I can fear my healer while I'm still DPSing the main kill target such as the DPS. Now, when you have a Chaos Bolt, you can use Havoc to send out two Chaos Bolts for the price of one. Billy Mays guarantee, it's excellent. Uh, so it, that'll increase your damage as well as put more pressure on the healer, which could pop defensive CDs to counter that Chaos Bolt, which overall is good for you. So you, uh, my Havoc macro, which I'll put in the description, casts Havoc at your focus, so you don't have to click off and cast it. So he'll, it'll cast Havoc, and then when you Chaos Bolt, It'll do two Chaos Bolts, one to your focus and one to your main target. And it's really effective. I don't know why that one missed. But uh, yeah, they're wonderful, wonderful macro. And uh, like I said, I'll put my fear macro in the description too. It's just good for uh, keeping constant fears on your, your target. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed my Destruction Warlock guide. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, it's very simple to learn, but uh, it's hard to just do a WoW guide. But I do apologize. If it, any part was unclear to you, uh, all of this information will be in the description for it's easier to you know, copy paste and look at it. Uh, you can look at my armory as well, which I'll put in the description for reference, as well as Noxic, which I get most of my information from. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you had an excellent time. And like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know.